Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of a SE uh, 10 amp variable or vari variac variable AC transformer. This happens to be a Superior Electric out of uh, Bristol, Connecticut. These are very handy because uh, they are exactly what they sound like. They are a transformer that you can just plug into the wall. They generally come in uh, a few base sizes. Uh, the 10 amp is one of the larger ones, although they do make 20 and 30 amp. This happens to be a 115 volt version, but they make them in uh, 220 volt. They are also actually specialized, really expensive three phase versions of these, but they weigh like, you know, 30, 40 pounds, at least on the bigger sizes. Even this 10 amp one is a good solid 10 or 12 pounds. And since they are an auto transformer and their voltage varies, they're actually rated in KVA or kilovolt amps. I believe I may, may be wrong about that, but this is uh, 1.4, I believe. Yes, 1.4 KVA is to let you know that this thing is designed to dissipate over a thousand watts of heat. These are actually used in so many situations. I'm not aware of all of them, but even today in this day and age, the, a lot of association with these is like with repairing old tube radios and that type of stuff. But they have a ton of applications. And they're also designed many times for more permanent installations. Like on this, we can see that it has all, a big heavy duty mounting plate so it can be mounted to a wall or all sorts of different situations. This goes between zero and 140 volts. And it happens to be a generally a one-to-one -one ratio. I don't totally understand how exactly auto transformers work, but where I'm at, I have almost exactly 120 volts out of the socket. So when I turn it up to 120, I'm going to actually get exactly 120 out. So there are another style of speed or voltage control, and that would be these kind of electronic-based router speed controllers. But they have a couple issues. One, they really can't dissipate a lot of heat just because the electronics are small and they more expensive ones can but it's kind of pseudo because as the voltage you know as the motor slows down it draws less current and that's kind of how this works versus this where if you have a particular setup you can use these to make homemade high amperage dc power supplies just with a bridge rectifier and a capacitor or a couple capacitors and this will deliver, you know, over a thousand, you know, 1400 watts of power, even at 10 or 5 or even 1 volt. 1 volt seems irrelevant here, but, you know, all modern CPUs all run at a volt. And if you have a 100 watt CPU, yeah, they dump 100 amps up 1 volt into those little chips. It's kind of crazy. These devices also, you know, they're lightweight. They're more convenient. You can have an easy bypass where you have it set at a particular speed and you can just instantly turn it to full power. But... They are harsh on motors. They chop up the waveform. The big deal about these is the, it's still, say, an AC wave is a nice, smooth, flowing wave, just like a waves on water. These types of things take the waves, and then they just chop them up or chop the tops of them off. And it can make motors overheat and have uh, various other issues. But the reason these exist is specifically because you cannot take one of these transformers and integrate it into the trigger of a drill and have variable speed like that. Another quick note, one of these used on top of a similar unit and uh, like a drill like this, if you were to use this and this, both the variable speeds, it can cause issues and, and damage. So they always tell you on these things, don't use with variable speed tools, but that's a bit of a misnomer. If you were to use one of these on a variable speed drill, then you would just wanna lock the drill on full power and then use one of these only. As you can tell, this video is going to be kind of more about uh, using these with power tools, but there's just uh, so many applications. You could use an electronic testing. They are used with old tube equipment because you can bring the voltage up gradually on an old piece of equipment. Um, you can test voltage regulators. You can test uh, switching power supplies. They are often, if you look at those little wall warts of power bricks, they'll work from 100 to 240 volts. Uh, and you can use one of these with a step-up transformer or 220 volt version and actually test that. So it's surprising. They actually are used in uh, photography against uh, SOLA or what are known as resonant constant voltage transformers. And they can be used as extreme high precision light dimmers. 
But I've always liked this with tools because you get the nice AC waveform. It just makes it smaller or bigger versus this where it like chops it up. It has like a minimum speed. And as soon as you get near the top end, it just jumps to full power. Really kind of ugly where this is 100% perfect, smooth, and very fine all the way throughout its range. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let me move this stuff out of the way just a second. So somebody might, would probably never use a sander like this if they were making a model airplane working with softwoods. Uh, but what's really uh, kind of interesting, and they wouldn't use that because it's just way too aggressive for many of the softwares that would all be hand sanded. And this would be, you know, and if you, the kind of variable speed sanders just have a unit like this built in. And here's one of the issues is when you just turn it on at the lowest speed, I've even adjusted this to really go extra low. We can see that it still moves pretty darn quickly. Um, and that could be frustrating. So the wonderful thing about one of these Variax is that you can really finely control. Super fine. It's going to require a minimum voltage to really get the motor to overcome its own friction to build up. A sh Actually, I hear it buzzing. It's trying. Now it's starting to turn. Once it gets moving, we can slow it down. As you can see, we could get this belt sander to barely move at all. You wouldn't want to run it for a real long time like this because the fan basically isn't moving any air through the motor, even though very little power is. We're running 17 volts through this motor right now. Maybe that's a little low, but you can see where you might use this in this situation than somebody who's building models out of balsa wood or doing all sorts of crafts or plastics. You can, have, you can use a belt sander like this Makita that's designed, that's flat, designed to be used like this. And then you can have a real fine control over the speed. Anyway, let me turn this off. So let me uh, kind of visualize this. Let me get this off the table here. So anyway, you can use that. Uh, only the newer, newest, and they're kind of expensive, grinders have a variable speed. But of course, you can use this with this. Since it is a Variac and they have a lot of mass and are a big transformer, they really are designed to deliver their advertised load. And also being a transformer, uh, they can have a short-term high uh, impulse or even being overloaded for a short amount of time. So they work actually quite well with other electric brush motors. So yes, this can vary your blender, it could vary your food processor, it could vary your vacuum cleaner. And as I was saying with photographers, they can just get you know just an exact amount of light. And they tend to use incandescent bulbs because they still have some of the very best color when just the color output of the light bulb is 100% critical. Let's get a multimeter out here and I'll try to visualize what I've been talking about here and why they're so great for power tools. Maybe not so great, but at least being able to visualize the how uh, smooth the power delivery is. So we'll go ahead and start off with this thing here. We'll turn this on to, there's our AC volts. Can we get this to sit up on something here. I guess it has a built-in stand, but I never like the stands on the flukes. They're like these weird kind of like, you know, bendy piece of metal. It's really odd. So I have a special type of cord set up here that I am being safe to be able to plug this in right into an outlet. Well, that's a little bit strange. I'm surprised I'm picking up that much voltage and this thing is turned off. I don't know if that's noise or exactly what. This has new. This is a good multimeter. It is a Fluke 87, uh, true RMS. I wonder if I actually get that voltage coming out of this. No, at the very minimum with this turned on, I'm getting 0.7 volts. So there's actually something funky with these electronic ones because I'm picking up quite a bit of voltage even when it's turned off. And then when you turn it on, it's actually still putting out technically 117 volts AC, but it's cutting up the waveform. And if we turn it up, we can see that there's very little difference that occurs until we get to the very top. And if we turn it on to full power, the voltage stays the same. See, it's really, I don't exactly understand all that, but it's these, those electronic, these electronic boxes really do work kind of funky compared to something like this. So let's, do that, we'll plug this in, and we can just turn this power up. I think everybody can see that display, it's pretty crisp.
just exactly where we want it. We can just be super precise. We can just barely turn the style. We can just do fractions of a volt AC. It's really amazing. And then just right on up. It's really rather handy. They're super smooth. And then, of course, with the power tools, if you really got to get a job done, you can't overvolt a uh, power tool motor by a little bit. 10, 15 volts in a pinch. It's going to spark more on the brushes. The motor's going to generate more heat. You'll know what you're, you're doing when you do that. But it is a way to get a little boost of performance if you really have a job that you have to do. So if we move this up, we can see that we can go into you know, or whatever our household voltage is. Maybe we want to, in Japan, things are at 100 volts. So you can actually use this just to turn it down to be a little nicer to any 100 volt equipment that you may have. And of course, if you have some situation where you're living in a place that only has 100 volts, really low voltage, you can either use one of those uh, power step-up voltage regulators. And I've done a review on a few of those, and they work based on transformers like this. That's why they do work so well. Or you could always use one of these in a pinch, and then it allows you to overvolt by a nice fair amount. This one will go up to almost 142 volts. So it's really... Just a pretty darn handy little unit. I was trying to keep this little video under 10 minutes. I didn't quite make it. And that was just kind of doing this simple demonstration here with the power tools. There's just a lot of stuff. And so I'm going to do another video about actually using one of these to make a, a custom DC power supply. Anyway, I'm going to go and uh, cut the video off here before it gets even longer. I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.